CNN has been caught staging fake news scene. You have the behind the scenes video, and then the people have now found the CNN edit from the film crew staging the event. So they show you driving to it, and then it cuts on CNN. Our message to terrorists, get lost. And then it shows her showing one person in there, and then more while she's live. Like it's spontaneous, it shows on the video all these people getting in front of the camera and piling up. There's the lady posing as a reporter, and then we've got the footage of her where it's a huge film crew with a crew of like 70 people. Unbelievable. Man, that's devastating. CNN, the Counterfeit News Network, has been caught stage managing a scene and then presenting it as if it were news on their fake news network. Journalists are not supposed to be involved in what's called stage managing to manipulate scenes that are then presented as news. You can see that the small group was allowed past the police line and the CNN crew here is literally directing them helping them get framed properly for their shot. Of course, this footage was shot by a bystander and posted on Twitter, at Mark Antro. And this is what the viewers at home were presented as to what happened. But of course, those who were there in person saw something totally different. Becky Anderson of CNN is seen in London handing out props to a, quote, peace group. They want to show groups that are saying peace to Islam, be good to Islam, because that's not really there. They have to go out with a whole film crew and then produce it. So the journalist who found this was, um, his username is at M-A-R-K-A-N-T-R-O. He filmed it and I was just blown away by it. And right away I was like, this can't be real. This, he, they're caught dead in the act. This is a smoking gun video of CNN creating fake news. They even hand out, it looks like CNN printed out the flyers for the quote peace group to even hand out. This is fake in every sense of the word. This is the, the biggest story of the day by far. They continue to get caught, you know, again, showing Muslims together, showing peace, peace in these staged PR events with cops standing behind them to make it look like everybody's going along with the attacks and rolling over. It looks like they printed out props and they go, hey, just come here and we'll stage a scene. And that's the whole issue. CNN has some questions to answer. Now, I know what they're probably going to say, Alex. They're going to say, oh, the protest, the peace group was already here. And all we did was we want a good shot. Blah, no, they blah. have giant dollies, giant crews. It's all roped off like it's 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 they all want to be Netflix producers. So CNN's going pure fiction now. I watched the video 10 times. Because the first time I saw it, I couldn't believe what I was seeing before me. I said, this this has to be a Hollywood production. I thought it was a Hollywood production. Then I fact-checked it, and I found out that CNN on his official Twitter page had posted it. And then I found out that this person was Becky Anderson of CNN. So this is real. The, the, the news now that people are watching are literally Hollywood productions. Uh, people, those people and they have to go out and get women to dress up like Muslims to make it look like the Muslims are upset because they can't get the Muslims to come out and criticize it. Look at this. Here you can see one of the CNN producers wearing their headphones telling them, no, 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 move over a little bit more to your left. Then once the shot was framed up the way that they wanted to present it, then the CNN reporter began her piece. So they get guys in turbans. You can tell a lot of these people are actors. I mean, God, the, some of the beards are like glued on. Exactly right. And the, and the CNN people even printed out the little hashtags for the picture. You can see the CNN prop guy. No, you see them out. handing it out. You see them handing it out. Yeah, the props. Sort the of it's, why props. does CNN think they can go in the middle of a street and do this over and over again and not get caught? Well, because they, that's why they try to moralize people. The info warriors are everywhere now, everywhere now with the cameras, and CNN is going to learn a valuable lesson today. They show the crew. It looks like a crew of like 70 people for this. This is a big Hollywood shoot. They've got lights in the middle of the day. I mean, this is highly produced. Yeah, they have lights. They have um, uh, fake props. They have their little, you know, area roped off, even though there's no danger area. That is all fake. It isn't a real thing. And then they have these people. I mean, look at it. If, you, if you're watching the video, there's this caution tape. But the people are behind the caution tape. How can you have a caution tape? that's a, a cordoned off, but then you have people behind the tape so dangerous, the prop guys coming out, they're printing things out. She's no, going absolutely, no, 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 they're using the caution tape as, as the block for the production. CNN caught red-handed staging fake Muslim uh, peace demonstration because they, you know, it's a big thing they can't get the Muslims ever come out and decry it. So they just staged this deal and this is as phony as a $3 bill. Mike Cernovich, thank you so much. Thank you, Alex.
dinner, an event that started all the way back in 1920. President Trump tweeting earlier, I will not be attending the White House Correspondents Association dinner this year. Please wish everyone well and have a great evening. Uh, Mr. Trump will be the first president to miss the dinner in more than 35 years. The last was President Reagan, who skipped in 1981 while he was recovering after being shot. Uh, Reagan still called in by phone, however. And I want to talk about what this means for an already contentious relationship between the press and the White House. With me now is economist Ben Stein. He served as a speechwriter and a lawyer for President Richard Nixon. He also worked on the other side as a journalist. Ben, I suppose you're not particularly surprised by this development. I'm not surprised at it. I'm not disappointed at it. And I don't blame Mr. Trump one bit for doing it. I mean, he's a punching bag day after day after day in the media especially what's called the mainstream media, and I don't blame him for not wanting to go and be a punching bag in person. Okay, so you did you hear what he said yesterday at CPAC where he's talking about the media? I, I saw some of it actually on CNN as you were okay. excerpting it. Yes, I had that pleasure. So he, he said he, he's, he said that uh, he called the media the enemy of the people which is what we heard him say before on Twitter. So he, he said that out loud. He accused the media of making things up, of making up sources. Is well, that, I think they, sorry, I beg your pardon, I'm sorry. I'm I was going to say, is that, I mean, do, is that something you would give credence to? Or well, what is going say, on there with what he's saying? Well, I wouldn't say that all of the media is the enemy of the people, but look, Every day you pick up the New York Times, every day they're slamming, slamming, slamming him. I'm a great fan of CNN. I watch it quite faithfully. Every day CNN is slamming him, slamming him, slamming him. Every day they're looking for a scandal. They're just turning the woods upside down looking for a scandal. They're hoping, I think, to do to him what they did to Nixon a long time ago. And, and I still haven't found any real scandals. And I, I, with all due respect, I don't blame him for being furious at them. And I think he's got a lot of company. I'm out there giving speeches all around the country all the time. People, an uh, awful lot of people are not great fans of the media, and they see the media as an unelected aristocracy and a feet core of impudent snobs, as Pres Vice President Agnew called them a long time ago, who are dumping all over the mainstream of America. And uh, I, I think Mr. Trump has a lot of company. Do you think some of what goes on is self-inflicted 
by Mr. Trump? Mr. Trump is not the smoothest operator. I mean, he's not uh, Bob Hope. Uh, he's uh, and he's thin-skinned and he fires right back. Uh, I agree. Some of it, no doubt. Some, there's no doubt. Some of it is self-inflicted. But I think this general idea that the press can just hack and hack and hack away at the president, that he is expected to just sit there and take it, is not a sound idea. And I, I, I notice day after day, week after week. Everything's negative. Not one positive response. I mean, here's a guy who picked a person generally among the legal profession, and I am a lawyer as well known, awful lot of lawyers, very well respected guy as the Supreme Court Justice, we hope, and hardly any positive coverage of that. He is doing what his constituents well, asked no, no, him can to I, do. May I counter that, Ben? Because oh, please, of course, when, that's why you're when there. Gorsuch went up and spoke to a Democratic senator, we covered in depth the fact that Gorsuch had had said something that actually endeared him to uh, Democrats and that actually a lot of establishment Republicans appreciated and it actually many people thought tempered Gorsuch or at least revealed him as they felt to be a moderate that they think he is. I mean, how are we covering this in a negative way, maybe a nuanced way, or Donald Trump goes to the uh, African American History Museum and he talks about countering bigotry, and we cover that as well. I yes, mean, you, 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 you did cover that. So that's one, that's one of hun or two of hundreds of stories, most of which are extremely negative, and God bless you for doing that positive stuff. But look at the way they slammed him for not covering uh, right immediately the desecration of the Jewish cemetery outside St. Louis. I mean, this is a guy, and this, look at the way the media is endlessly playing him up as an anti-Semite. This is a guy who has a Jewish son-in-law whose own daughter converted to Judaism, who's never been quoted saying a single anti-Semitic word, and they're constantly slamming him as being a racist or a white supremacist or something without any evidence of it at all. I think, with the, with the greatest respect, and I appreciate your pointing out things where I was mistaken, but with the greatest respect, this is a guy that they're just smearing, smearing, smearing all the time. I don't blame him for wanting to fire back at them. If he were as smooth as Ronald Reagan, he would handle it more smoothly. But no one, again, will ever be as smooth as Ronald Reagan. You, you said you think the press is trying to do to him what they did to Richard Nixon. Yes. So give us your perspective on that, because a lot of people look at what happened to Richard Nixon and they say, I mean, what, it was what Richard Nixon did to himself. The tapes from the Oval Office showed that six days after the Watergate break-in, he was discussing himself. He was discussing a cover-up, you know, the smoking gun yeah. tape. I, so, I, I, I mean, I, how did the media do that to Richard Nixon? The media picked one tiny little thing that he did. One tiny, tiny little what thing he did. One tiny little and thing. One tiny little thing he did, which is just to discuss a cover-up. He didn't do the cover-up. They didn't follow through with the cover-up payments that he discussed. They just discussed it. This was a guy who brought more peace to the world than any president in the 20th century. Open relations with China. First strategic arms limitation talks with the Soviet Union and leading to an agreement. Ended the war in Vietnam. Brought on the prisoners of war. Got, uh, set, saved the life of the state of Israel. And so, so you think the Watergate scandal and what was uncovered was fooey? Time. It was not a good thing. Shouldn't have done it, obviously. But compared with his achievements, nothing. And I think they're doing the exact same thing to Mr. Trump, whose achievements, by the way, compared with Nixon, are nil. But I think they're trying to do the same thing. They're trying to undo him, basically, before he even gets started. I mean, I think it's just extremely unfortunate. The country has real problems. And for them to be focusing on trying to bring down this guy before he's even gotten started 